going to start with uh, Lulzim first. You know, Lulzim and Serena, both of you spoke of, uh, this is a very stupid question, just to show that uh, every kind of question is possible. You talked about uh, lead in the water, okay? And where does this lead come from, Lulzim uh, and Serena? When we, especially when we are talking about village waste, wastewater from villages, from also from municipalities, uh, I thought that heavy manufacturing was not in uh, in cities. So I was wondering, where is this lead coming from, Lulzim? Are you there? Yeah, I'm Serena? here. Thank, yeah. thank you for the question. Shall I start or Serena? Yes, please. To... Then okay. I'll have another question for Serena also. I'm okay. going to ask one one question for everybody. So, but this is, I know this, is, I'm asking as a common citizen. I'm not a... Yes. Uh, actually, what I found out so far is that there is so such a high uh, amount of lead in the water, but there is not exactly... I did not find exactly where the lead is coming from. So basically, one of my su suggested steps to immediately, immediately take or directly take in Albania, we have to take care of where is this lead coming from. There are different sources of lead. They can even be from the from the washing detergents. At least there are some sources that they, they say it, but most they are coming from from recycling industries or like bad battery. Yes, yes. Mostly are batteries. But I did not find so far in my study where exactly which company is coming. But at least I, I analyzed the water in several parts of the river and I could find approximately which is the, re, the region mostly polluted from, from lead. And there you should start to kind of check the region and ask people and so on. But it's, we should definitely find the, the concrete source to find the solution then. Can I, can I add something? Yes. Um, yes. I think in the Netherlands, we found out quite recently that there were problems with the lead coming from the pipes in the houses and pipes that are transporting water. I'm wondering if this is something that could cause this. I see. Uh, uh, th this could be something because there is corrosion in the pipes. Yeah. And uh, that has been, uh, I was, so I was wondering. So it's the whole infrastructure that needs to be maintained. And uh, actually that, that brings me to my next question for Serena. Um, you talked about maintenance and operations, Serena, and you said that was what the locals did. Uh, now, I have seen in uh, developing countries that, uh, you see, as soon as something is a success, the government wants to appropriate the installation and as soon as the government does that, it becomes an acquired asset. And unless they have uh, interest in maintaining it well, it doesn't get maintained over the long run. So I really wanted to ask you about how the government shared ownership rights and maintenance and operations quality with the citizens. Because you said the citizens were maintaining and operating. Okay. So thank you for the question. Maybe a short reply to the first question that was addressed to Luzim and myself. In my case, the answer is pretty much easy. Uh, this uh, village or community is a rural area slash uh, became then an uh, urban agglomerate. And there, there are industries for textile. So they have uh, jeans especially. Uh, it's one of the hub for jeans production, so it's pretty much easy that despite there, there is in place the normative to have a wastewater treatment plant that would take care of the first uh, round of um, uh, hygienization or treatment before discharging either into the channel or into the neighbor river. The probably quality compliance has not reached. So we have the position of uh, lead and aluminium into the both channel and uh, river. And that moves easily then to the soils and is getting soon saturated, especially for, um, for some of those uh, metals, which are also micronutrients. If those are the right quantitative for plants. It's saturating the capacity of the soil and it's planned that in five generations, those area and soils won't be used anymore 
for, co for uh, cultivation because they are fully contaminated. So this is one part. Uh, now, answering to your question on uh, solution uh, path finding, this was an uh, uh, extreme uh, long engagement on culture of the communities. So in this area, most of the um, uh, soil or that are cultivated, they are either in rent or they are owned by the, own, the owner. So they are not in rent but cultivated by the owner of the land. And they find out that the establishment on this uh, PPP, let's say, cooperation with the owner of the land has worked pretty much well. So the owner would pay back the initial payoff for the installment of the wastewater treatment plant to the municipality by paying for operations. So basically, they have a contract for maintenance of X amount of years with the municipalities until it's paid off and then it would become property of the landowner. So the landowner has all the interest on maintaining also functioning and uh, the uh, wastewater treatment plant because those water would directly be used in terms of reuse water in their own land. So there is a double win. And for the training, uh, this was provided by the FIDE Comiso, that is a kind of NGO or paradox to the government. So that's how it was the solution. That. And this is a very nice example, really, of the institutional infrastructure that Mike was talking about, the financial and institutional infrastructure with the contract design that can support this whole project. Uh, Mike, I wanted to ask you coming to the football story which i found fascinating uh, where exactly can you give an example of how the in the football story you actually brought in you actually brought in uh, hand washing uh, and toilets because i couldn't get the connection and yeah. secondly was mm -hmm. there any you know we in terms of uh, uh, replication elsewhere. I was also thinking, did you face any any kind of community problem from explaining about menstruation in schools? Was were any all the parents happy about it? Was there any reaction? Um, so the la last question first, not that I know of, but I do, do know that in certain communities there were some issues with uh, letting the girls play football. This was actually the, the main thing. Not so much in school, the menstruation. No, I, I have interviewed boys myself uh, in a classroom setting and they were so open about menstruation. I would actually want to say more open than they are here in the Netherlands where this is integrated into the system. So um, no, um, and I think based on the first question, uh, it's the Dutch Royal Football Association that developed a methodology that's called the World Coaches training and they developed a manual on this and so okay. these coaches are trained on a certain type of football training where they for example um, now I think briefly in the video you could see it that they would play with the ball then the ball is actually representing the germ or the virus so you have to <laughs> quickly and then you have to go wash your hands okay more through these types of um, yeah this is one example but there are more and there is a manual I would have to say, um, yeah, that's well thought through. And that's also something that, that have, uh, uh, professionals have contributed to developing this type of train the trainer system, because these teachers are volunteers. They are not paid for this. And they're teaching and they, uh, uh, they, they add this to this, to, to their task. Yeah, yeah. I think this is, this is a wonderful offering of this uh, conference to the world. We must put that in our links. Um, yeah. Thank you. Nuke, you were complaining about uh, resources, lack of resources. Now, uh, exactly is the government not having resources to give to NGOs or is the system not working? Uh, can you explain about the problem of resources a bit more in Nigeria? Anurag, do we have? All right. Yeah, we have Nuke. Yeah, 
New cake, explain to us what's the problem? Why aren't you able to get the money? There isn't money, or you know, it's it's not given out for this. What's the problem? <laughs> It's not, it's not that there is no money, hmm. uh, but, but the WatchCon has not been recognized at, uh, 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 say, at the country level. You understand? Even the states. They are just looking at the foreigners, the, the, the European Union, UNICEF. Uh, anytime they decide to sponsor any watch project, that is when uh, the WatchCon will move into communities and begin to sensitize people. But at this point, we are looking at, we've taken this message to primary schools, secondary schools, and then we, we, we engage the, the scholars from universities. And then we discovered, we, we can't just be waiting for the European Union or UNICEF or people who are coming from abroad to sponsor WASH programs. You understand? We now say, okay, it is better to get uh, funding from government by pushing WASHCOM to have a separate ministry or department so that it will be included in WASH, uh, in, in government uh, yearly budget, so that there will be funding for steady uh, uh, sanitation program in Nigeria for, uh, uh, for the safe sanitation uh, project, you understand? So going to government or going to NGOs or going to uh, uh, philanthropies or private sectors, even the public to beg them for finance is, is a very difficult issue in Nigeria, do you understand? It's why the WASHCON, the WASHCON is now looking at it. Look, let us push this into government. And we've been trying to do that, but actually government have not approved that. They, 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 are, they are only looking at uh, UNICEF or European Union or other NGOs from external donors to come and sponsor this project. Whenever they push money in, it is when the WASHCONs begin to work. But in that case, sometimes when you sensitize people, you need to continue sensitization. You need to continue moving. And it is funding that will make us continue moving. When European Union sends money, it's when we move. If they don't send money, we don't move. And then if you talk people to do something or ask them that you are coming next month or next week to come and verify what you've taught them to do, and then all of a sudden you don't come because of funding, because of moving large, uh, 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 party or people, watch comes who go into different communities. In my local government, we have over 224 watch communities under me. Imagine 224 watch communities. Each community has more than two, three thousand people. So, so how can you do this without funding? And then, if you, no matter what uh, proposal you send to government, they don't, they don't see it as, they don't see it as something very important until it is included in government budget. Each time you go there to ask for money to do something, you write and write and write and write. Before you know it, the essence for that has gone. So it's why we are, we are, we are talking about funding is very important here. You understand? Th so, thank you. Thank you. That's a very good point, very relevant for many of us in developing countries. I have one question for Majita. Huh? I have one question for Majita. Yes. I'm still there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm with Shanmugan. I've got to ask him the question. Then we come to Majita. Okay. Okay. So I'd just like to ask Shanmugan. Shanmugan, you see, you have not worked on these. You have given a wonderful presentation. You have visited the village and you have seen all these eco sand toilets. Now, I'd like to know what do you think of them? What's your, uh, and what did people tell you when you, when you went to visit these toilets and smoke to them? Did it make any impression on you? Because this is a technology design. And that's very linked to Madita's uh, main message that design matters. So what was good about the design? What was, what needs to be improved about the design? Right. Uh, so obviously with the respect to this one, uh, we needed a behavioral change and people had to uh, adapt from normal toilets, which they were using, which used water to flush. So that was a big change where people uh, were kind of uh, hesitant to do that. And uh, there's, there's scope for going wrong, where if you, uh, you know, accidentally pour water into uh, the, the poop hole or something like that, it can definitely contaminate the, uh, uh, you know, compost. So those things were definitely there. So th those were the ones people were hesitant about. Uh, we have made some changes in the design where the wash water is actually, uh, the wash hole is actually separate and things like that, but still. Uh, that's that's where I think uh, we have a scope for improvement. And uh, one more thing is obviously the uh, Indian way of squatting toilet. 
uh, having it in a western uh, way of uh, you know setting one can actually help us uh, improve the design uh, there uh, so that uh, elders and people uh, you know who are disabled can also use yes so these are the now these then come totally in the domain of madita leo go ahead ask your question then i will ask a question to madita okay, okay. so my question is um Madita, do you feel like there's a, a lot of resistance from the people with new designs that you come in or um, resistance from the government to understand the idea of a new toilet design? No, uh, thanks, Leo, for the question. That is not the problem at all. The moment I come in and I speak to people, it's understood, but it is exactly of, of that step to get there. Because everybody of you spoke about design and everybody has a different understanding of it. So for example, um, it is one thing to say that uh, Shama said, you know, the eco sun toilet design, and it is, it is, um, yeah, a technology driven or an engineer's design. So it is a solution in my opinion and not a design. So it's a beautiful solution, which in my opinion is also one of the better ones for sure. But if you incorporate the design aspect to say, okay, how can this um, toilet, this eco toilet, um, be in better communication with the user, for example, uh, to say, okay, um, here is where I put my feet, this is where I put the water, and things like that can be easily transformed and um, transferred through the form, how something looks, how you decide to design something, if you change the angle slightly so that the water, water doesn't spill over, this is also design, you know, which makes a product um, work without you actually noticing that something has been done. So the Ilkosan toilet actually is one of the, the, the better examples because the, the biggest problem I personally see with Ilkosan toilets right now are that um, you have to still maintain them, right? So after th mostly three years, you have to open the chamber and take out the now like composted uh, waste and put it on your field. But most of the Ukosan toilets, you have to actually with brutal force, come and destroy the wall, take out something, take a shovel, put it somewhere else. And then you are left with a broken toilet that you have to fix again, to use again. So all of this is pretty humongous. Um, yeah, like you expect so much from the user, not just to adapt, but then also to repair it and, and think about using it again. So they are like really simple, steps that you can take while building this toilet that something like that is not necessary and that you can with easy measurements reduce this additional burden um i i madita i and then anurag uh, i just wanted to say anurag is probably going to say the same thing so go ahead first anurag go ahead and then i will continue okay so in in places like india one of the biggest problems that we face is not really the um, the use use of toilets, but then what do you do with fecal uh, sludge that comes out of the toilets? But uh, if we uh, we have a centralized system, it puts a lot of uh, a, a load on the government to really process and maintain that. Instead, we have a, if we have a decentralized system, will that not be easier to maintain although it is on uh, the responsibility is coming on the user but is it not easier to maintain um, so that was my question if you if you want to uh, just comment on that i think i didn't get the question no i i sort of got it with this this is he's asking between centralized and decentralized systems I think in Europe, we are going more and more towards decentralized systems because uh, centralized systems require a lot of effort and decentralized systems are easier. Do you agree? Well, I think in the case of the toilet and in case of the community engagement, it is the most important point not to think about how the politics of the land is organized, but more like how this very particular group of people who come together to use this toilet, if it's one family unit, if it's maybe half a village, if it's a village, if it's a coastal strip, 
how these people organize themselves and how to get people together. You get people together if something excites them. So if you just build a brick building that they may be pain, it's no offense here, but this is not really exciting people like football, for example. You know, you, you just have to give them something that they want, something that they think is great. So I do think this would be, uh, yeah, the, the bigger question here to say, how do you, can you organize people around the toilet? You know, forget the politics for one second. We just assume now it's been built, like the, there, there was some kind of communication taking place in the forehand. <laughs> But, you know, how, how do you get the people to engage with each other with the object? The, the thing is, I think you're very right. I just wanted to say that uh, uh, I, I learned the hard way what you presented. And so I think that what uh, we focused on and what the focus is on is on structural design and that too for replication, mass replication, yes. building those millions of toilets. Yes. We have taken care of the problems of ecosand that you mentioned, like tearing down the walls. But Madita, you have talked here about the approach designers take. And what is very interesting is that before we used to think that the design approach could be used only by businesses to make a profit but it is much larger than that. And by making it, you know, in the ideal sense, human centered and community centric, I think you captured all the uh, elements that are needed because finally you want it to be adopted, maintained and used well. So for me, it was, as Leo said, uh, a perfect way to tie up the knots because that is one approach that has to be uh, followed and that is being followed. I love the theory of change. I loved all the, basically I loved everything that everybody said. I think there's, we, we got a lot of uh, takeaways from here. And uh, I think that uh, we'll be happy to share the emails of the speakers with uh, all those who have been here, who have participated so that you can get in touch with them and uh, we hope to continue together to make the world a better place. With this, I give the floor to Leo. Thank you, thank you, Shaima. Um, I would like to thank you all the speakers for their honorable presence here. Um, and just really say we're very inspired by um, all the information you provided to us. Um, and I would like to pass the floor on to Adele and Anurag. Leo, do we still have time for a question? Uh, okay. Yes, of quick course. Question. Quick, quick question. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Yeah, I would also like to thank all the speakers. It was really interesting. I have a question for uh, Mrs. Uh, Maike Devete. And actually, uh, you mentioned in your presentation about the 80% rule. And I was wondering if that also applies to other types of sustain sustainable behavioral change. And if you could give us some more insights on that. And my second question is about um, uh, this interactive way of teaching that I think it also, it is, it's very crucial. And we also see that in the literature nowadays, that is a way also for, for example, education for sustainable development, that is also part of this type of approach to in, including um, sustainable development practices in education. So I was wondering if you have any insights about how, uh, tra uh, how transferable this knowledge and experience that students are, gain are gaining are to the broader community or to their families? If you have any insights, if they have managed to make an impact to the families of the students, like if the students talk about these new skills and uh, behavior that they are adopting, thanks to your initiatives. And if this behavioral change is also sustained, maybe once this program ends, once this, um, uh, yeah, after the end of this program, if you see that in the long run, they do also uh, keep adopting this different behavior. Yeah, Thanks. Um, I think I heard three <laughs> questions. Uh, uh, first of all, um, the 80% rule, I know that is to get the health impact. That, that, that's all. I'm not completely sure if that goes for other behavior change uh, elements because in this case, it's something that has been tested also on, on, on uh, yeah, it's, it's a real um, medical 
background, of course. Eh? You, you, uh, we know this uh, uh, from literature, mostly from the health uh, sector. Um, and then the question about uh, sustainability of the hygiene behavior change interventions. So what we are doing at the moment is um, embedding this approach as much, much as we can. And in Kenya, this is already quite far with the government into the national curricula. So the idea is um, that we, we know um, from our, my own country here in the Netherlands that uh, um, math education works better if you let children jump the sums, for example, when they're young. And it, it retains better in the memory. So it's something that's starting to come up, I think, in, in, in the entire education world. Um, so we've been working very closely with government uh, in this, with local and national and all these different ministries that uh, that, that Nuka was talking about uh, in Nigeria. Uh, this fragmented ministry, they need to, to join hands. Yes? Ministry of Sports, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Water, Ministry of Sanitation, go on, you have at least five ministries involved. Um, so that this is a little bit what our approach is now. How can we embed this? Um, we have not, I think, been, uh, there's not enough time passed at this moment to see what the long-term effects is on the first schools are now, say, six years implemented. So we'd have to do a little bit of more follow-up research. But I know already there are a little bit, there are some impediments. One of them is that uh, this is, well, it's also the strength of the programs. Let me start with the strength is that we are building it on existing institutions. So community-based organizations, uh, people in the community. So we have community coaches and we have school-based coaches. Now, the, the, the issue is with school-based coaches is that they are transferred every four years. And so if we don't keep the train the trainers mentality very strong, uh, we can lose this uh, knowledge uh, and, and skills out of the schools. So this is also, we're trying to, to constantly lobby with governments. Can we uh, mitigate this? And we did this by installing community coaches and arranging competitions in the community. And because football is fun, everybody likes it. I think the community attracts, is attracted to it. And what we did see that we have a lot of children in the community that are not yet going to school even. They have to work. Now they also attend these competitions and actually are drawn into school by these community competitions. So it's a little bit broader than the schools. It's more into the communities and using competitions. Um, but I have to uh, uh, say, and this is probably for every uh, hygiene behavior problem, it's, it's a very uh, fragile um, uh, thing. You need to keep your people. You need to keep your, your knowledge. What you also see is people that have acquired new skills leave. Uh, they go away, brain drain. Um, but as far as we can see it, and we tested it on the first schools, you can see that uh, the hygiene behavior is still sustained. So the schools that implemented in 2012 and 13, they scored relatively uh, high on the hygiene behavior. Uh, did I miss uh, anything or did I answer all your questions? You answered all my questions and I think you gave us already very nice ideas because I'm personally also very passionate about this type of sustainable uh, behavioral change through education. And I think you mentioned two things that are very important for me. The first one is the trainer to trainer program. So really try to sustain these capabilities and skills over time once the teachers are not there anymore to pass this over to the, to the new colleagues. And also this tool of maybe uh, in, um, including community and having this NAT strategy of competition to really engage more people. Because we also see sometimes it is difficult for teachers to engage into that, to spend that extra time, to get trained. They think yeah. okay, it's outside of my current curriculum. Why should I spend that extra time to teach yeah. something more? I have already so much to do. This so is, this is a challenge yeah. we are always facing, especially when there is no financial incentives or things like that. So we just try to convince them in this way. Yeah, and we also learned this throughout the program. Uh, uh, sorry, I guess, yeah. you know, some of the speakers have to leave for other meetings. Yeah. But we, we are going to continue the conversation. So I leave the floor to Anurag and Adele and we'll close up. Uh, so can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, Leo, I would request you to go to yeah, this slide. Uh, so uh, I'm here to th thank all the participants and the speakers for, uh, for the, and their presence here and staying with us from the organization team at Indian Need India. Uh, site for society and UNU merit. Uh, your participation and the um, feedback to the speakers is very 
important and uh, I am sure that it will be very useful for our speakers as well. And with that, I would request uh, Adele to uh, close the session. Can you also hear me? Yeah. Perfect. So uh, we hope that you enjoyed this session and that you had a lot of fun and that you learned something new. So all the links for the uh, association are on the chat. So please make sure to check that. Uh, you can also reach us on the following email address. If you have any question, it's going to be on the next slide. So we hope to see you at our uh, future. Thank you.